Welcome to another episode of Down a Rabbit Hole with Four Fifth. I'm your host, Hocus Four Fifth, and I got my co host in the building, Balance. Balance, what's going on? Hey, I'm doing good today. How are you? I mean, I'm good. It's been a it's been a long day. Um, you know, but we here though, as usual. And uh, I think yeah. today's show is gonna be a good one. It's gonna be a good one. Um, you know, it's been a lot of talks lately about Larry Hoover and who he is and what he means to to us, to our people. And it caught my attention. And I'm like, okay, so you know, we got we gotta definitely um touch this topic. So um, so you know, today y'all we got a special guest to actually touch on this topic. And you know, without further ado, I'm gonna just bring the guest in and let him explain himself and tell him who y'all is. Rod Hayes is in the building. Rod Hayes, what's going on, big bro? What's going on? What's going? On? I was listening to the introduction, and I noticed that y'all names are significant. Yes. Mm. Right. So, so she's balanced. Yes. That's my. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. exactly. And you said you said hocus what? Hocus four fifth. Hocus four fifth. Hocus is Hayoka, which is the sacred mystics of the land. So you pick the name without even knowing you was calling yourself a Hayoka. The 45 is the shotters, the ones who shoot on behalf of the elders. So you've been spitting the game out in the public. Wow. So you've been, been shooting from behind the scenes. Yo, when, I, when people always ask me, yo, where do you get the name Hocus Four Fifth from? And it's crazy. Like, I'm, I'm going to start jacking that. <laughs> start, what does it mean? <laughs> I love that. But, you know, you said I picked it. I didn't even pick this name. The name chose me. So real quick, I'm going to yes. tell you where I got the name from. So th it was a guy named Hocus in my neighborhood who he was a graffiti artist. Back in the days, you know, it was, graffiti was big in New York and in the Bronx. And for some reason... Two of my friends, they thought they seen me tagging it up. We, we call when you say tagging up, that means writing it on the wall. I know what it means. I'm with right. you. <laughs> <laughs> so for the audience out there. He said he's not old. What you talking about? <laughs> no, but you know, being older, he definitely would know what I'm talking about. So, you know, they thought they seen me tagging it up on the wall. And, and I was like, yo, that wasn't me. They like, Hocus, I see you. I knew that was you. So every day they call me Hocus. And I was this when I was like 11, 12, 13, around there. And I was just like, yo, I, I, I'm Hocus. You know, and four. Okay, so. The way that they named you was called uh, a mirror reflection knock. Oh. So you reminded them of him. So he gave, they gave you the same name he had. That's called a namesake lock. So he was a Hayoka and he danced in front of you to show you how to do the sacred dance of the masters. In other words, he made the people in your community see him in a specific way that you didn't want to be seen, so you became the exact opposite. Wow. That's dope. <laughs> yeah, that's called polarizing the effect. Polarizing the effect. Wow. So I, I, I could tell, right, and I know uh, y'all could tell by now out there that we are talking to a real elder right now. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, this this um interview is not about me. It's about Rob Hayes and, and, and Larry Hoover and, you know, info that he he's, he's here to bring towards you know, fourth. Um, we want to start off though with Raw Hayes. Who are you? Let us know who you are and what significant role you play right now on the planet Earth. Um, right now, I just so happen to figure out how to get us out of the blood rituals they was using to oppress us. Right, and I done it on behalf of the leader that asked me to do it, Larry Hoover. So he told me I had to study a lot. Um, on the journey, so he said we was brain banging. He said, "He said let them out there gang bang all they want. We need somebody. One of us got to buckle down and brain bang. We got to hit the book so hard that when we come out, we will be a totally different person because they said that we would never be able to rise from the dirt back to the position of prominence. And if we can get one of us to make it, we can. We all made it." So they all put their money on me across all of the families. I was the last resort, but everywhere they put me to test me, I bumped straight. And that means that I stood up for my principles and my values, no matter who came from what direction. I just told the truth and kept it real and kept it moving. 
So I got the respect of the ancestors and the elders on the land from my whole journey throughout my life. I was going around meeting and greeting the elders from an early age to be given the, uh, the information I needed to figure it out. So they was doing what we call voodoo conjure. The voodoo conjure started when Garvey came over. The reason why Garvey came over because Prince Hall and Absalom Jones who started the Prince Hall Masonic Lodge discovered that they was using our own shit to oppress us. But they didn't have what you call the Grand Master's key, the gorilla key. So that's why Garvey was able to tell you all of the secrets in one lecture or one speech. It's called the whirlwind speech. And this is what we watching the effect of because he gave us back the secret to our shit. Pardon my French, but he gave us back our, the secret. Right, so once we understand that the whole secret is to not be deceived and to follow your own mind and to use your intelligence, that was the platform of Garvey. When you look back, every time we start coming from under the oppression, the motherfucker look like us, break the, um, the momentum by killing our leader. Mm. And they've been telling us misdirection, pointing that finger at somebody they call the white man. But by um, cat's paw, using somebody to do your dirt, they made it look like it was somebody that didn't look like us doing the dirt. But everywhere we went, them people weren't there and we still end up with one of us killing our great leader. So the enemy is within. Mm. So once we get rid of the enemy within, then we no longer have to worry about the external enemy because we can see him for what he is. You can see him now. All you got to do is go on any of the videos I did and scroll down and you'll see people calling out who they call in agents. Mm -hmm. Race traders. They expose themselves by defying the call to unity of the tribes because they understand that that means that they can't do the dirt they was doing before because when we are in charge of our own homes, you can't run over our children because the parents is home now, you know? And so now we come back, the elders come back, the ancestors come back because somebody infiltrated the family tree that didn't belong there. And that's why they say everywhere you look, they there, but you don't know they there. They look just like us, some of them darker, with woolier hair. And they came over as conquistadors, which is a, a from the Tudors, is a royal family of Europe. They came from the Canary Islands and went into Europe as Etruscans. And they was over there do, doing the baby raping rituals, drinking their blood, making adrenochrome and all of those things. Then they came over here. They challenged us, our elders. We didn't have no high chiefs on the land. We had only um, one, two and three feather chiefs. We didn't have four regalia chiefs on the land at the time they came. So can, can and that's I how they was able to get in. I, only reason why I want to chime in because I, I know where you're going. So like, just for the people who don't understand, you said from when they came here, we didn't have no chiefs on the land. So when you when you say we, you speaking of the indigenous people of this land and, and as for the lack of a better term, black people or so-called African-Americans, we was already here, right? This is what you're trying to that's, talk about. Uh, that's absolutely a thousand percent what I'm saying. Okay, so anybody that, they got a third grade education to do the math on the slave ship know it's some BS. Right. Because there's no way you can stay with no bathroom, no running water, no toilets, chain together, packed like sardines. It's a gas chamber in a week. And this is a six month journey by sea on a boat. Right. 
And then the record, the written record, our ancestors clearly have in the written record, when they came, we saw no ships. They was there at the time telling us in the future, when they came, we saw no shit. I mean, don't fall for the bullshit they about to tell you. Mm. They already preloaded us for it. Now, when certain elders come in, we recognize that that what you call gap in information that makes no sense, a blatant contradiction that tells me there's a problem, an anomaly here that is more important than the story that's being told. There's a hole here I got to patch before I move on. What do they mean they didn't see no ships? The people came some kind of way. They didn't come how they said they came, apparently, because our elders said they didn't come in ships. Where's these pictures of these ships? They got pictures of everything else, right? We don't. Where is the ship? They got ships from, look, they got Chinese ships that go back 10,000 years ago. But they don't got a slave ship from 400 years ago. That don't even make sense. Like, where is the, yeah, you said, forget the pictures. Where's the ship, right? Like, well, why, why are they not? Where the wreckage? Somewhere? You can go. You can go under the water right now and see wreckages that's recorded from the 13, 1200s, the thousand year mark. Even the BC era, you can go see the wreckage. You can't see the wreckage of one freaking slave ship. Mm. They did. They came infiltrated some other means. They brought their slaves with them over the Bering Straits. They couldn't have came in how they see it but they didn't come south, they went north and trekked around the land and came in from the east and landed in New York. And this is why they keep telling us that we came over on a land bridge between Russia and Alaska. They crept around the top of the map because they was navigators. Even if the story of Columbus is a legitimate story, the black guy that was the navigator, Pedro de Negro, he knew where the hell he was going because he was a navigator of the sea and he had to know the sea. You can't be a navigator and not know the sea because you got to equally as well know the stars. So he had to know exactly where he was going. It was a misdirection. They came in in the islands by that little old boat, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. When they came in, that's the red herring. That's the overlay for the underplay. Because the underplay is that the North Pole is the bottom of the planet. When they changed our view and gave us a northerly up, perspective that was our ancestors telling us look to the north for the solution to the problem listen to the story and then look to the north for the solution to the problem they said in the south they didn't come in on no ship but a boat that columbus came in on came from spain in the in the central and south america region the conquistadors that came in from Spain after the 1611 eviction in mass of the Moors after the Spanish Inquisition, when they finally ran their ass out of there, they came and it was looking for gold in Central and South America in search of what they call Cordoba, the lost city of gold. The lost city of gold, in truth, is the crystal city in the Book of Revelations. And they couldn't find it because Atlantis didn't sink. They lied to us. It flew yeah. in the mass extraction to remove people from the planet because catastrophe occurred because Nibiru flipped off course. So they took as many people as they could to preserve life on Earth. And we was infiltrated while that was taking place by somebody that wasn't from here, they call him a reptilian. Mm. They look like walking lizards. But when they take on our form, 
When you kill them on earth, they come back looking like me and you because of their resonance. They ain't us. And you can say, tell. When you say they, are, are we talking about a, um, are, 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 like, as melanated people, <clears throat> can they be reptilians? Some of us? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what, that's what so I'm So when they came in, they didn't look like we look now. They came in looking grotesquely disfigured. This is what the Great Wall of China was built for when they first came. That's what the war was about, that they was building a wall to contain them, to contain the threat. But when you kill them on earth, they come back through our women looking like humans. But they ain't us. And the only way you can tell they not us is you have to know our hearts. And that's why they've been telling you in your religions about the difference in the wicked and the righteous. They ain't us. We didn't know they're killing them on earth, make them come back on earth. And when they come back on earth, they look like us. Or we wouldn't have killed them on earth. This, this is what happened in strategically. Is this got something to do with people be like, you know, when you die, don't go into the light because the light is how they re reincarnating and recycling and putting us in this time loop, so to speak. Is Does that have anything to do with what you're saying? That's how um, no, actually, that's a whole different phenomenon than what I'm talking about. Okay. But they harness that phenomenon by cutting down the tree of life because that's how we used to filter those yeah. souls into the, the deepest parts of the earth. So when they came back in human form, they cut down all of the trees, the giant trees that used to feed their roots to the core of the earth would filter them souls. So they didn't want that. And so they cut all of the trees down. Some of the trees, the leaves used to touch the upper canopy of the atmosphere. You know, so when they was doing that, um, we was fighting wars all over because they were intelligent as we were. So while we fought, we had to study them because they had a, up, a, a they had a, a, a hand up on us. They had something in them that we didn't have in us, that wickedness. To them, it's not wickedness. That's the first thing we got to understand. To them, it's not wicked to them. Because in the universe that they come from, that's their norm. It's not the norm in the universe that we live in. We live in what we call a free will universe and they live in what you call a restricted will universe. And their universe is masculine patriarchal resonance. Ours is feminine matriarchal resonance. Our whole creative structure in this portion of the um, creation is feminine. They came from a different stellar bank that their whole systems was based on the masculine. And this is how our divine feminine and divine masculine of the planet got through out of whack. It's through, the, it's through, them, it's through them breeding here? Is, is, it, is it, that's what it is? Because when they, like, when they breed, are they breeding are they incarnating only their kind or do some of us cycle through that? You know, because you okay, said- Okay, let, let me explain this to you right quick because this, this, this is going to take a lot of people by the loop. Ever since the beginning, the 12 daughters of Eve was all different shades of skin tone. It was 12 of them that cover each sign of the Zodiac from the beginning. We always had people of varying skin tones that settled in different climatic parts of the planet that they chose when the 12 sisters was split and dispatched as Isis queens around the planet or Sybil queens. The Sybil queens is the royal part, the Isis is the high priestess part, and the Isis seat is the queen seat of heaven and earth council seat 40 on the galactic council the king seat of heaven and earth what they call the high pharaoh seat or the high seat of illumination which is represented by our solar sun as a 50 disc when they call it a 50 disc that because it flips from a 20 which is a um 10 toes 
down on the mother line and 10 toes on the father line. And it becomes an elder at the age of 50 of the years of whatever planet it's they're on in this stellar system. So at 50, the one who has passed all of the family rights of each of the families that he was presented to is then presented to be an elder. And now he has to go into uh, a phase of um, development because he's responsible for his entire family tree. When you tie all of the families together, he then becomes responsible for all of the united families together as a family redeemer to clean up the um, rogue elements on the family tree. So you have to identify what was how the enemy was using us against us in order to break his method of dividing conquer. Once you understand the method clearly, you make contingencies to use the method to your advantage so that your enemy can't use it to conquer you. You can use it to come up on. And that's a great point right there. What are some action steps you think that we could do now? Uh, well, we passed all that. Now the elders hear that. They hear. They waiting on us to reach critical mass and understanding that when we come together as families and put our fucking foot down, there's no power in the universe that's not backing us up. Known or together? unknown. How do we come together like that? So right now we have what you call a battle cry. The battle cry is, everybody look at this. This is how we're going to do it. And that's free Larry Hoover. Produce our king because the Galactic Council requested the king be presented of the sevenfold nation, GD I nation. I wanted to go into that. Um, Please, I want you to go a little bit deeper and explain it to the people how poor Larry Hoover really is, right? Because people just think that he's just some criminal gangster, right? And how important he is until, until uh, the, the, you know, to our freedom, period, right? Yeah. Right. So like, please go into depth with Larry Hoover because this is important. Okay, so on our land, we form into our own tribes and we join into roles that's like us and we pick up what you call the flag. That means we tried up with somebody. The leaders that a collection of tribes pick becomes classified as a chief or a king, right? When he have all his, he had to have a certain amount of nations tied together in order to form a high chief seat or a king seat. There was three kings to the land according to galactic agreement with earth. The three kings that's walking, that's on this land right now it's Stan Tukey Williams, Larry Hoover, and Chief Malik Angel Bay. Now, our enemies infiltrated our organizations and turned us against each other because that's what they do. But the leadership has always been fighting the same enemy together. But you can't fight every battle. That's called an empirical victory or a punic victory where you 